Hey, this is Jerry Feta, CEO and co-founder of Philanthro Wealth, coming at you with a Finance Friday you're not gonna wanna miss. Make sure you stay tuned. Hey, Jerry Feta here with Philanthro Wealth. So we've been doing Finance Friday for many years and I have some very sad news. Okay, I was in Florida Sunday night I flew in, found out there was a hurricane, and I had Finance Friday with me. And, you know, we were hanging out, we're having a good time, and we found out about the hurricane. So we quickly packed our bags. We started evacuating Florida, and I actually had to drive from Tampa to Tallahassee. I didn't get to Tallahassee until about three in the morning almost to catch a flight out and get back to Kansas City. And in all of the hustle and bustle and all of the panic that was happening, Finance Friday Live did not survive Hurricane Milton. So I want us all to take a moment of silence right now and just um, appreciate the many good years of live Finance Friday that we've been given and just recognize, you know, how good of 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 a time that was together, right? So just take that moment of silence really quick. Okay, good, thank you. Now, I have some good news. We have a new Finance Friday. Okay, and I don't want to get, you know, uh, too excited about it because it might make it look like I'm excited that Old Finance Friday didn't make it through Hurricane Milton. I don't want that impression to be created. So that's not what I'm about. But we have Finance Friday now on a recorded basis. And so just like with Weekly Wealth Walk, just like with FedEx, I'm going to be doing Finance Friday still every week, but it's going to be recorded. It's going to be, you know, pre-recorded. There will be better editing because of that. And it will be scheduled every Friday, just like usual. It's not going to be the live one anymore. But again, we can't bring that back to life. Milton did what Milton did. And we can just have good memories from now on. Okay. So without further ado, I want to get into this week's Finance Friday, which I want to talk to you about the importance of philanthro investing. Okay, philanthro investing. We've discussed this word philanthro before. I did an article on this before. And I want to give you kind of the, the gist of that. But, you know, philanthro as a suffix, like, like a suffix is something that, that combines, you know, two different concepts or words together. It's the, the pre part of the phrase philanthro wealth, philanthro, you know, philanthro wealth, philanthro investing, becoming a philanthro banker, right? Philanthro is somebody that uses money to help. I want you to think about a philanthropist, okay? They have a heart for humanity. They want to help others. They want to be doing good things. And so a philanthro investor is somebody that deploys their capital, their investment money, not only to create wealth, but also to restore life essentials on this planet and to promote human welfare, right? And I want to give you just the definition of the life essentials really quickly. If you're not familiar with that, I'm going to read them off to you. And these are really important. The life essentials are are kind of a main thing that we're focused on, okay? So there's 10 life essentials. I'm gonna go ahead and share them with you, okay? So the first one is water, right? So water is a, a life essential. I want you to imagine where life would be on the planet right now if we didn't have clean water, right? And, and many people on this world don't, okay? Health is obviously a life essential, right? Health... We've, we've all got this phrase, health is wealth, right? Health is definitely a part of this. So if you're not healthy, you're not going to enjoy financial wealth. If you don't have clean water, you're not going to enjoy financial wealth. Housing is a life essential. Okay, I don't know if you've ever been into an area that has, you know, either a homelessness problem or they have really bad housing conditions. It makes for a bad environment. Okay, the environment itself is a life essential right? The oceans, the forests, you know, making sure that they're not polluted, that we're, we're taking good care of the actual environment and the planet that we live on, okay? Air is a life essential. Having access to clean air, very important, okay? Structure is a life essential. Things like the infrastructure that our society is built upon. We need things like towns and roads and bridges, etc., right? In order to actually have cities and have communities. Animals are a life essential. Okay, I love animals. That's like one of my soft spots in life. And I'm usually kind of an animal whisperer, right? I've had, I've had donkeys that, that vibe with me, my, my dog, my cats. Like I love animals, right? Uh, we did a trip up to uh, Virginia in the DC area last summer, farm full of goats. I had quite the time just hanging out with the goats, okay? Education is also a life essential. 
Hey, this is one of the key ones, education. Next, I don't wanna interrupt you too long. I just wanna give you a free offer from my book, The Blueprint to Financial Freedom. If you go to jerryfetta.com forward slash B2F promo, you can get the book now. I'm gonna let you get back to the video. And I think that this is one that, that I don't need to say imagine a world without education because we're kind of there, right? We have very low education on things that matter. Finances being one of them. Energy is a life essential as well. Okay, it takes energy to have cars and boats and planes and, and you know electricity and all of this stuff, but we need to do it in a way that actually makes it sustainable. Okay, and then finally, art is a life essential. Okay, I am not the traditional artist. I don't do crafts and those kind of things. My wife is, and I can tell you that an environment with art is much nicer. It brings your energy up. It gives you something to appreciate and admire, right? You can see art in nature. I want you to think about what if there was more art? What if cities were beautiful? What if, you know, homes had art in them? What if communities were more artful? So these are the 10 life essentials. And so a philanthro investor is somebody who invests to create wealth and also to restore those life essentials on the planet. And in doing so, we promote human welfare. We promote human welfare. Now, I really love this because if you think about, you know, the idea of philanthro, okay, someone that's benevolent, they have a heart for humanity, they want to restore life essentials, they do want to promote human welfare. So if you're a philanthro investor, investor means you're putting money out with the expectation of getting something back. Okay, it's very important to specify that because there are lots of investors in this world, okay? I just have money and I'm going to put the money out there and get something back by all means and ways. And I don't have any sort of conviction or integrity on what it is that I'm funding or contributing to as long as I get something back. Okay. I'm not about that. Like, so I've said, you know, the reason I don't do rental real estate, I'm not excited about, you know, that, that little surf over there pays my mortgage down so I can drive my BMW or my Rolls Royce and the cash flow pays it and it's coming out of their pocket. I don't like that vibe. I don't like that flow. Now, I rent my personal residence because I choose to, right? But if I was going to rent somewhere and let's say somebody is the landlord and they approach me and they're like, you know, I can't wait till you move in because you're paying my mortgage down and I'm going to I'm going to use you to pay for my new car with cash flow and I'm going to suck everything out of you that I can, you, 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 you dirty little renter. I wouldn't rent from them, right? I would be like, screw that. That's weird. I don't want that. You don't want that. Apparently he does, right? So I'm not impressed with investing in a way that either demeans people, it promotes, you know, using others and not really helping them in exchange, or maybe it harms life essentials on the planet. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in investing in, you know, companies that are going to manufacture weapons that will be used to, to create war and, and violence in other countries because they happen to live on the, the wrong side of an invisible line, right? I'm not about that. I'm not interested in investing in a company that's going to create psychiatric drugs that harm people. I'm not interested in, in, in companies that are polluting the environment or giving us food that makes us sick. It does not matter how much money you pay me. You would never get me to give money to a cause like that. And so part of the problem here is that we misunderstand that there's different types of investing. That's why we specify it's, it's philanthro investing. It's investing with the purpose of restoring the life essentials and promoting human welfare. And if it doesn't do that, I'm not in, okay? There are tons of ways where I could put money into something and, 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 and make a, a huge return, but I'm not gonna be proud of what I'm doing and I'm not gonna be passionate about what I'm doing. Okay, and I wanna draw this out because I think you know this is important. This is important. I'm gonna put this on the whiteboard. This is the classic thing that happens is people have time. We start with time. And we give up the time because we trade the time for money. Right. And so we have this dilemma of, OK, I don't get the time back and I'm trading it for money. And somewhere along the way, we realize the money is being devalued every year and it's becoming worth less and less. And so it's like we're trading a finite, priceless resource for something that literally gets printed and created with digits on a screen. And we see that trade and we're like, that's not a fair trade. And so, you know, most people, they're going to respond in one of two ways. They're going to trade time for money. And they're going to trade money for stuff because they use the stuff to try and get back the time they lost, right? 
oh, I don't get to use the time, so I need a new car. And I, they try and make their life more livable because they don't like the thing they're doing with their money. Okay, so that's option one. They don't like the thing that they're doing with their money and time, so they trade it for stuff and they try and, you know, just basically live in denial. That's option number one. Okay, option number two is the rat race escape. Okay, and you hear this one, you know, it's, it's the same concept as retirement, just rewinding and doing it earlier. It's, I still don't like what I do. I don't like what I trade my time for. It's just money. And I don't, I know the money is going down in value. So beyond the money, there's like, well, I don't like doing this. It's like prison. So I'm going to try and get out early. I'm going to try and escape the rat race. That's the boat that I used to be in for quite some time. Okay. The problem is you trade time for money. Then you trade the money for assets rather than stuff. And then the assets are things that we're going to get to in a second, have the same problem behind your time for money trade. Okay. So we trade time for money and we trade money for assets. Okay, this is the rat race. Right now, what's wrong with the rat race? Escape the rat race. What's wrong with that mentality? The fundamental problem with me not liking the fact that I have to trade my time for money is that my time represents my activity, my energy, and the day-to-day, -day, like the doing of my life. These are the things I have to do and I'm doing them only for money. And I know that money is cheap and not valuable and not a real motivator. And so it's like, if it's only money, why am I doing it? Okay. Imagine if I was trading my time for something I loved, for something that aligned with my purpose, for something I was passionate about. That was the exchange. And then I happened to get paid when I did it. How would that change things? Would I really be looking at, you know, I feel like I'm losing my time and, and, and I'm not going to get it back. And I've got to then trade that for stuff in order to fill the void. Or I've got to try and escape the rat race of, of doing the things I love because I don't want the idea of I get paid to do the things I love. It completely obliterates the concept. That's the problem with the rat race is when you're doing the rat race escape option, you're trading your time for money. And the problem is that your time and energy is not aligned with your goals, purposes, and values. So then you get money and you trade the money for assets. If those assets aren't aligned with your goals, purposes, and values, you are creating the same problem. Hey, what's up? Jerry here. I just wanted to give you another reminder. Grab my book, Blueprint to Financial Freedom. It's going to be one of the best books you have ever read on finance. I can promise you that you're going to love it. It's also a free offer. So if you go to jerryfetta.com forward slash B2F promo, you can get that now. If it's not okay for me to trade my time for money and avoid and bypass what matters to me in life, why would it be okay for me to then take the money and flow it towards and support things that still don't align with my goals, purposes, and values? And I want to show you what I mean here. So if you have over here, you know, on the investing side, the PI, philanthropy investing side, you're investing for purpose. Let's say that the thing you trade your time for, time for money, then money to become a philanthropy investor. Let's say that you can't align your time and your purposes and goals. So you still are in a job or a career where you're like, this isn't necessarily what I love. It's not what I'm passionate about, but it pays well, okay? True or false, if you were taking the money and funding things that did matter to you, you were philanthropy investing in things that did matter to you, is that or is that not better than the alternative of trading time for money, purposeless, and then trading the money for assets, also purposeless. At no point are you fulfilling your purpose. Scenario one or scenario two, time for money, not really on my purpose line. But when I get the money, I fulfill my purposes with it as a philanthropy investor. I don't know about you, but I'm more motivated to make that trade. Because it's like this job, maybe it's not my passion, but it funds the things that matter to me. And I'll never forget this was when I was 18 years old. I was trying to start my business and my manager was like, he was helping me get started. He's like, hey, that job you hate, I want you to look at it as though they're funding you to be in business. I don't want you to look at it as a job. I don't want you to look at it as a career. They are strictly your funding source to be in business. 
Okay, because if you have a job now and you're like, I don't love the job, it pays okay, it pays well, look at that as your funding source. That is funding you to become a philanthropy investor so that you can take your money and support your purposes, your goals, and your values with the finances provided, the funding source provided. Don't look at it as a job. Don't look at it as a paycheck. Look at it as your funding source. You trade them time and ideas and energy, they give you funding, and then you take the funding and you apply that to the things that matter for you in your life. And the byproduct of that is two things, okay? You gain more financial freedom because you're investing and you're getting a financial return. And in the process, you're improving life essentials, you're promoting human welfare, and it disconnects this like work so that one day you have a nest egg. And then once you have the nest egg, then maybe you can be generous later. And you're like 90 by the time you're finally being generous and being a philanthropist because you spent the first 40 years building the nest egg. Then you can finally retire and then you're worried about having enough money. So you're giving a little bit. You never really get to do the things you want to do because you, you dice your life up into these, these long phases and defer everything. Do it all at once. Okay, work a job. I don't care if you like it or not. If you don't take the money you're getting, put that towards philanthropy investing, build financial freedom, be generous with it through those investments because you're promoting human welfare and you're restoring life essentials. Okay, so that brings us to number three. Number three is to become a philanthropy investor. That's really your third option, right? And your third option means that you're investing for things that create wealth in your life now, right? Wealth in your life now. For example, housing philanthropy investments. Right? I can invest in housing in a way that produces passive income for me now, and it also helps people. So I'm like, okay, great. I love this. Okay. Even better if like my job and the thing I trade my time for also has that purpose line. But if it doesn't, I'm okay because I'm like, I get the money and I do this with the money, and that makes me happy and it makes it worth it. So it's not about escaping the rat race. Right, because that's still a game. Someone created that game, right? Then now you've got the game of of rich dad that you've got to follow. You've got the game of whoever you've got to follow. It's still a game, still a game, and you're still a pawn in that game. Okay, trading money for stuff. We already know that's a game. The consumerism, the middle class, all the stuff that we see around us today that's wrong with society. So what I'm telling you to do is create your own game as a philanthropy investor. Do the thing that nobody else is doing. Play the game that nobody else is playing. If I'm trying to start a business or get, you know, break into an industry with an idea, I'm not going to go where it's saturated and everyone's doing it. Guys, everyone is trying to do the retirement model. Those who aren't trying to do the retirement model, they're trying to do the escape the rat race model. Very few people are doing the create a wealthy life now model. Restore life essentials model. Promote human welfare model and do it all now with the money, the resources, the funding that you get from whatever you do for your time. Okay, so I hope that this Finance Friday was helpful. If it was, and you've not read my book, what I'd like to do is offer you a copy. You've seen plenty of offers for this already, but get a copy, a free copy, Blueprint to Financial Freedom. Guys, this is the blueprint. This is the step-by-step -step toward you know achieving a life where your passive income exceeds your generosity, expenses, taxes, and savings. One of those milestones along the way is to become a philanthro investor so you can start putting your money in assets that do that. And so the book is gonna teach you how to get there. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Comment below with your thoughts and questions. I will answer them back directly and I'll see you next time. Hey, this is Jerry Fetty here. I wanna thank you for watching my video, watching my content. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to learn more about the Blueprint to Financial Freedom and how you can achieve passive income, that exceeds your savings, your expenses, your taxes, your generosity, and build wealth like the top 1%, I want to encourage you, grab a copy of my book, The Blueprint to Financial Freedom. You can go to jerryfetta.com forward slash B2F promo, or you can click the link in the description of the video here. The copy is free. You cover your shipping. We'll send the book out to you, and we'll send you an email with a bunch of great bonus material also for free. Get the book. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on my next content. Thank you.